Today's video is not a product review. There will be a review, but just not today. What I've just installed is the Zendur SolarFlow 800 Pro, including the battery. And what I want to focus on this video is how I integrated it inside Home Assistant. So this is about how it shows up in Home Assistant, what works, what doesn't work, how it fits into the energy dashboard, and what expectations you should realistically have right now. We'll be starting in a couple of seconds. Before we go any further, just a quick but important note. This video is not sponsored. Zender did not send me SolarFlow 800 Pro for testing and nobody paid for this video. The unit you are seeing here was bought with money earned by this YouTube channel. And honestly, that also means I want to say thank you. Because without everybody watching, liking, sharing and especially supporting the channel, doing projects like this would be a lot harder financially. So thank you. This setup literally exists because of you. Before we touch Home Assistant, here is the full context. Until recently, this setup used a generic Tuya smart microinverter, it was plugged directly to the wall socket. No battery, no storage, just solar goes in, power goes out. And to be fair, it worked, but it was also completely blind. No buffering of excess energy, no storing power for later, no real insights into what was happening. The microinverter is now gone and it's been replaced by the Zendur Solar Flow 800 Pro, which finally adds a battery to the system. Right now I'm still running the old 300 watt solar panels, but the new ones 430 watts by facial panels are waiting to be installed. And there is also one important limitation. In this house I currently do not have per phase energy monitoring, so no Shelly 3M Pro or something similar. So this video is a very intentionally not a full review. It's about integration, visibility and understanding what works in Home Assistant today. Once all components are installed and after a couple of weeks or months of real world usage, I'll do a proper review with real numbers and real conclusions. One early impression though, even with the same old 300 watt panel, I'm already seeing higher output compared to the previous Tuya compatible microinverter. That strongly suggests that SolarFlow 800 Pro is simply a better inverter. So far, I'm very happy with the system. But the detailed verdict will come later. Zendur provides a home assistant integration via the hacks. And this is important. The integration is maintained by the Zendur themselves. This is a very good sign and honestly I'd love to see this become an official home integration one day. The installation is straightforward. Go to Hex repository, search for Zender Home Assistant integration, install it and restart your home assistant. And then you need to log in into your Zender account, but no, you do not need username and password anymore or to create a duplicate account, this time the Zender has provided us ability to create an access token. Once you do that, Home Assistant creates a lot of entities. There are also two ways to integrate things. First one is via the cloud integration and the second one is via the Zender SDK. Although I did try both, at the end I decided to go for the cloud. Just I don't have issue with the cloud. And if we look at the devices that are added to the system, we have the device itself, battery and the Zender manager. If we go to Zender Manager, we can see that we have information about the manual power control, operation mode of manual power smart matching discharge or smart charge, and the available energy. For the battery, we have everything that we want to have. BMS firmware version, current, SOC or state of charge or electricity level, high cell temperature, high cell voltage, lowest cell voltage, pack type, power, current power, state, its charging and the total voltage. And for the solar flow itself we have a lot more things. We have controls and we have sensors. For the controls we can select is it AC input mode or output mode. Note this one doesn't work for me. 
if I change it to AC input mode, it would just revert back to the output mode. Then we have bypass mode, which I can try and change, for example, change to auto, information about connection mode, cloud or Zen SDK, fuse group, input limit, it's currently at 600 watts, LED on the device, output limit, currently at 20 watts, state of charge maximum, when it will stop to charge the battery, state of charge minimum, it will stop discharging at 10%, and then bunch of sensors. Some of them are, let's call it that, debug sensors. Others are, for example, state of the solar panel, output power, maximum inverter power, grid input energy, device temperature, etc. etc. So from monitoring and visibility perspective, this is actually very good. But as I said, you'll notice the integration exposes control entities. These ones here. So technically, you can change them from Home Assistant, but in practice, as I mentioned, they don't really stick. As soon as the Zender mobile app syncs with the device here, for me, it all writes everything back to whatever it is set in the app. So let's be very clear now. Right now, this is more of a monitoring first integration. And this is not the Home Assistant limitation. That's simply how the Zender Cloud and mobile app have today. If you're expecting to control your inverter logic from Home Assistant, this is currently not possible. From what I've read on the GitHub repository, this is something that the Zender is officially supporting or officially trying to do because they do not want to duplicate everything from Zender app inside this integration. Now for the really useful part. Even without working controls or some of the controls, this integration works very well with Home Assistant Energy. You can add solar flow to it as a solar production source, a battery, and also an energy contributor to your house. And when you hook up everything, you get something like this. You can see how much solar you are producing, how much energy goes into the battery, how much is discharged, and how much power flows into your home. Even with the current limitations, this is already a huge improvement to my old microinverter setup you finally get the context, history and trends, not just instant numbers. And with the improvements of 2025.12 release of Home Assistant, summary, energy, and also now or current data is always available inside Home Assistant. And as I mentioned, if you edit the dashboard, you can see that I have solar panels added, home battery storage added, and this nicely integrates into overall energy dashboards. On top of energy dashboard, I also built a custom Home Assistant dashboard just for Zendur. This gives me a clean overview of live solar input, battery state of charge versus the discharge power, grid and inverter state, and even deep technical values for debugging. This is where Home Assistant really shines. Even when control is limited, visibility alone is incredibly valuable. For example, this graph here. You can understand what's happening with your energy system at a glance without opening the vendor app. If there is a request, I will include the YAML for the dashboard in the video comment section. And I did mention something, but I will not be going into the details. I said that this system is really working great. For example, currently my solar input is 93 watts. Even when the sun is going below the horizon on a more of a cloudy day than a sunny one. If this video helped you, consider liking it and subscribing. And also a big thank you to everyone supporting the channel, especially YouTube channel members. And of course, let's not forget to say thanks to everybody watching, sharing, liking or commenting on these videos. Thank you. If you want to support the channel, you can become a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Also, don't forget to check out the merchandise store or send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.